Hey guys, welcome back to Oxangel RC. I have yet another copter to show you, but today it is a small one, the Ichin Lizard 105S. What is curious about this model is that it comes with a Runcam Split Mini type of camera. It is lighter, but records only 720p, and also the copter is in those smaller sizes, which I just find so irresistible because they're so tiny and cute. In addition, people tend to underestimate them, especially those know-it-all hardcore 5-inch fans. Yeah, you know who you are. Get over it. Now, not joking aside, the lizard looked like a pretty awesome little package and as far as I'm concerned it is, even though it does have some quirks but we'll get to those in due time. The copter comes fully assembled and even the props are mounted because being that small allows it to be transported in a small box with props on so you don't have to take them off all the time when transporting it. The frame definitely is weird, so intricate looking with a mix of carbon and aluminium parts. One would wonder why the need to complicate things so much when it could have been done so much simpler with better results. At the back you will see the video antenna which is conveniently mounted away from harm and angled appropriately for the flight angles this thing is promising to achieve on 4S and just below that is the LED and buzzer board which was held on the frame by some pretty pathetic piece of double sided tape which was just looking for a reason to fall off and you can imagine what could be the results if this happens in flight. So I removed that tape and put on a piece of my own reinforced tape that I use when I want to mount something permanently. This is not going anywhere anymore. At the front you can see the camera's lens mounted in an aluminium housing which looks nice and between the camera and the antenna you will find the XM Plus receiver which I have come to respect quite a lot following my recent flights with the Nano Talon. Overall the flight controller and other electronics are well protected inside the frame and should survive quite a bit of punishment by a newbie or me during a race for instance. The ribbon cable coming from the lens module to the camera board is well tucked in there and should be sufficiently protected as well. In speaking of the camera, it records 720p at 60 frames per second and at a rate of around 12 megabits per second which is not high but the video quality looks okay. Keep in mind that the camera will start recording on its own but will corrupt the video file if you unplug the battery before stopping it manually and fixing that file does not yield perfect results. Now getting the SD card into the SD card slot is not an easy job, not sure why but it feels as if something is in the way and the car did not want to go in at first, but with a bit of effort I made it go in. The ESCs are an impressive 28 amps continuous for their tiny 20 by 20 size and they are paired with 1104 6000 kV motors on 4S. Just by reading the specs on this I think it will be a tiny little beast. With this set you also get some spare props, prop guards, a battery and some other hardware, but one thing I'm never going to try are these prop guards, as if they would do anything on a 4S racer. Now, since I had also gotten the new iRange X radio, the IR8M, as I already mentioned in my Ichin Wizard TS215 video, my idea was to bind these copters to it and test all of them at once. Since the iRange X radio is a multi-protocol solution, I was able to easily bind it to the XM Plus receiver on the Lizard and it worked flawlessly within one meter of range, but at that time I didn't know that. Before flying though, there were some other things that needed to be said, namely the channel map flight modes and the OSD setup, you know, the regular stuff that everyone should be able to do with relative ease nowadays. So the next day came and I was now at the flying field ready for my first ever flight of the Lizard with the new radio and everything looked well, everything seemed to work, the camera on the Lizard was recording, copter was arming and responding to inputs correctly and then I took off and all looked good aside from some audible vibrations that were coming from the copter but that turned out to be more PID tuned than any Anything else. I flew around for a while and just as I was starting to put some distance between me and the copter, for an instant it became unresponsive and then all was good a moment later. I thought nothing of it and kept on flying around and at some point, not more than 50 or 60 meters away from me, it just entered into a free fall and actually disarmed prior to hitting the ground which was definitely not my doing since I flipped the disarm switch after that. I was a bit bummed and actually thought there might be something wrong with the copter itself 
off, so I recovered it, all covered in grass and mud, and tried again. This time it lasted a bit more before it did the exact same thing, but this time perhaps 70 meters away and higher. This crash actually required a prop change and a good amount of cleaning, as it did have quite a lot of dirt in the antenna area as it crash landed on it. Good job on the antenna mounting spot though, didn't even budge. So after cleaning it, I bound it to my Tyrannis and when I flew it next, guess what? There wasn't a single hint of signal loss. I went to the end of the airstrip, which is some 200 to 250 meters away and it didn't even hesitate. So moral of the story, the FR Sky Tyrannis rocks. And also there is something seriously wrong with the iRange X radio and I really do hope it is with my unit only. Could be bad soldering inside the case or an issue with this specific FR Sky protocol not sure at this time but I will get on that as soon as I can and might even mount an external antenna to try and make it work. If not I hope others will be having a better luck with these. The radio looks great, it can be considered comfortable to hold but I really don't like the quality of the gimbals though not sure you can expect more for that price. So by now I am sure you would have noticed that the video coming down from the copter was very shaky and initially I did think it was the props or a motor was out of balance but I couldn't see any of the sort. Replacing the props improved the vibrations a bit but then a friend suggested that it sounded like the PIDs are too high and the P gain in particular so I started tuning and after a few tries the situation improved a lot. Now the vibrations were not all the time, only some of the time, mainly when at high throttle and they were more than sufferable but still not good enough for me. I remember somebody on Facebook mentioning that the camera lens is loose inside the mount and when I looked closer indeed it was loose which would definitely explain the remaining vibrations I was seeing. I addressed the issue by adding some paper strips between the lens and the mount to fill the gap. On close inspection it seemed to work but I also need to replace a missing bolt and a nut from the frame. The fact that the motor mounts can move up and down on the frame without much effort also might be part of the cause of the vibrations but there is very little I can do about that short of moving the electronics to another frame which is still an option. Initially I had left the current indicator on the OSD but when I flew it it didn't change, I thought there isn't one and removed it. Later on, while addressing the loose lens issue, I noticed that there is a current sensor on the flight controller, it is just that the battery wire does not go through it. Instead, it is soldered directly to the ESC and I am not going to even comment on the quality of the soldering here and only a set of very thin wires go from there to the flight controller, so basically I was seeing only the current draw of the camera, video transmitter, flight controller, not the motors though. I honestly thought that this was a very stupid way of wiring things. They have literally castrated 30% of the functionality of the flight controller and saved what? Some effort on the part of the workers and precisely 4 centimeters of wire. Not sure it was worth it and this sort of thing just might put some people off of this if they care about looking at the current draw but not necessarily want to go through the hassle of getting it to work. Now I did want to make it work but I am also exceptionally lazy and since I didn't want to take the copter completely apart, I only removed the bottom plate and somehow, with a very steady hand, I managed to do all the soldering and desoldering to fix the factory job and get the current sensor working properly, showing the full amp draw of the copter. Power wire had to move to the front of the copter though, which is not a big deal, just change the way I mount the battery a bit. While the bottom plate was off, I also took the chance to replace the velcro strap with something a bit more reliable that I recently got. These straps are meant for use in gardening, but have proven quite durable and useful for holding batteries on copters. So with these new mods complete it was time to take it out again and see if anything would have improved. As expected there was no sign of the vibrations anymore, just some very slight yaw shaking at full throttle which I assume could be fixed by tuning. As far as the current sensor was concerned it was fully working now showing the full amp draw of the copter. Not sure it is showing it correctly though as according to it this tiny lizard 105S is drawing 40 amps at full throttle and that is a serious amount of current through those tiny mods motors which by the way come down cold every time. Now I did some more PID tuning and these are the latest values I ended up with. These are not final as I still feel there is more to be done but at least on my unit they made a world of difference compared to the stock PID so use them at your own risk. Overall I can say that the Lizard 105S flies much better than I thought it would, definitely feels a lot more locked in and on rails than my Falcon Evolution but it also has more RPM to work 
with and perhaps the tune might be a tad better. The provided 550mAh 4S60C battery lasts around 3 minutes so I might look into a slightly larger option as it does feel like it has more than enough thrust to carry a larger battery although it surely will look funny as hell. The barometer option was also a nice surprise on this tiny model, it actually worked a lot more accurately than the one on the Wizard TS215 and at some point I even managed to get as high as 289 meters which I think is the highest I've ever been with one of these race quads but I really want to turn your attention to something else here. Take a look at this DVR recording from my goggles and just note how absolutely perfect and interference free the signal coming from the copter is. Going to the end of the airstrip barely registers and in comparison see what the same trip looked like with the Wizard TS215. Not sure if this is due to the antenna itself or the way the antenna is mounted but I am seriously impressed by the signal quality I'm getting from the Lizard and I think these UX2 antennas are worth some attention. They do seem like quality stuff in addition to being seriously compact and light. But anyway... My final thoughts on the Lizard 105S, well it is not for everybody, especially if you're expecting that everything will work from the start. If you can manage only on a voltage measurement of the battery and are not going to expect an absolutely stellar performance out of it since it will not be able to deliver that with this bendy frame then sure. The Lizard is actually a pretty decent flyer that just needs a bit of tuning to make it really nice. That 720p camera is exceptionally light and the video recording is adequate. Frame protects the innards pretty well so newbies might not be able to break them too quickly and it is quite compact and easy to carry around with you even in its original box. On the other hand if you really need the current sensor then you might want to look at something else or you might not be bothered by the work that needs to be done to complete this copter in which case it is settled. The Lizard is an acceptable model though I can't help but wonder. The Wizard TS215 I reviewed last week that is also made by Ichin was so much better thought out and built so are they really made by the same people in the same factory? Anyway, if you have found this video interesting and useful, please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and also hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can be notified when I upload a new video. Also consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates. All relevant items featured in this video have been linked below and buying anything via those links would help support this channel. Another way to support me would be Patreon, the link for that is in the description as well. No matter which way you do it, all support is appreciated more than then you know and I would like to thank all who have chosen to do so. Happy flying and until next time.